Hello and welcome back to this episode of the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rich Fournier. And in this episode, I sit down with Phil Rotundo. Now, Phil is ranked number six in all of the U.S. and number two with Coldwell Banker for individual transactions. And he averages nearly one transaction every day of the year. In this episode, Phil shares how finding the deals that no one else wanted to do led him to his niche market in Florida and how he built his, his whole entire business off of 55 cent postcards. Now this conversation looks at the realities of a market downturn and what you can do now to weather the coming storm. Phil speaks very candidly about his journey and doesn't hesitate to share all of his message. So don't miss out, stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why some people thrive in all areas of their life? Welcome to the Peak Results Academy podcast with your host, Rich Fournier. Each week, we interview industry experts who consistently dominate in the fields of health, business, and beyond. Our mission is to share their personal struggles and strategies so that you can create your own peak results. Hello, everybody. Rich Fournier here. Welcome to this episode of the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, and I'm super honored, excited, and grateful to have an outstanding real estate agent from Florida. He is with us today, Phil Rotundo. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Phil, you and I have been corresponding for a little bit, and I'm so excited to have you. And here's some of the reasons why I'm really excited to have you. Um, You're super honest. I, I can tell by your email you were like, you know, should I be on this podcast? I'm like, well, Phil, I mean, last year you were the number one agent company wide with Coldwell Banker Realty. You're located in Florida and that's number one real estate agent for individual transactions. Um, number two agent for closed transaction sites internationally. Uh, number six in the country for individual transactions. Like over 300 transactions, is that correct? Yes, sir. Almost one a day. Almost one a day as an individual guy. And listen, <laughs> let's be honest. Okay, let's, this is called the way it is. It's outstanding. It's like the four-minute mile, right? How many agents in the world can do that kind of volume, regardless of the space that you're in? Uh, listen, teams aren't doing that. I'm a machine. I'm a machine. I'm in a niche that nobody else wants. It helped. Right. For our listeners today, let's get into the nuances of it. And then we can talk about the current environment, but I really want to talk about, listen, you're in a, in a niche that is focused on land, correct? Correct. Vacant land. Vacant. Mostly, <laughs> mostly in Florida, mostly vacant land. It's dirt. And usually they're around $10,000 or less a lot. <laughs> I want to move to Florida. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. <laughs> Come on, down. We'll leave the light on for you. We got plenty of people. I, well, I think you know when I did some work with a training company in Florida. And we did some work for Coldwell, by the way, when I was with this this company. Um, um, was it one out of seventy five people are, are a real estate agent? I think in Florida. It's amazing. It's you, you. In a week, you can get a real estate license. Right. Okay. There's over seven eight thousand realtors just in this county. Okay, so everybody's county. Brewer. Let's put it into context. Context. There's a half a million people in Brevard County. And you got seven to eight thousand realtors in the count in the county. Okay, <laughs> it's like everybody is a realtor. It's it's a tough business. It's a tough business to get into, and make money. You know, again, the same thing they always say. Ninety five percent of the business goes to five percent of the agents. It is awfully true, but it is true. So unless you find your niche and you're the best, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be trouble. Give you some context. I mean, up here in Toronto, um, on just on the Toronto real estate board, there's 55, 57,000 real estate agents. Um, And then you look at, so say central Ontario down, which is pretty much the GTA or the general Toronto area. We're probably about 72,000, but like, the ratio doesn't seem as bad when I hear you saying 78,000 for 500,000. That's a beer. That's what it is. That's insane. Okay. And I, I guess one of the reasons why I was a success is because I found the niche that nobody wants to do. And I do a lot of it and I'm good at it. 
and you're good at it. So let me ask you a question. We, we were corresponding and like, I'm not sure if you're aware, but this podcast is about creating a peak result and what is the nuances be, behind a peak result and creating a peak result. Um, and I asked you, so I think my email was, well, you still got to generate business. I don't care what commodity type you're in the real estate business. People still got to know, like, and trust you. And you said, well, I build my business on postcards. Postcards. <laughs> I tried social media. I tried online. I tried the website. My return is on postcards. Believe I get a one and a half percent return on postcards. And if I try a little trick here and there, I can get it up to 2% return on postcards. So not many people are on online. Not many people have social media. But you got to go to your mailbox and you got to check your mail. Okay, for that split second, they're going to take a look at that postcard. 98% of them are going to throw it out. But that one and a half to two percent of people are going to pick up that card and give me a call. If you give me a call, I'm going to close you. And that's how I make my business. But you can't argue with a one and a half to two percent return, a directed business for to owners who own the property. I'm not just sending out a general blanket email or going online to anybody who doesn't, you don't know whether they have anything or not. It's directed and it's a postcard, okay? They can take a look at it at their own time, okay? If they're interested, they'll call. If not, they're going to throw it out. So do you mind if we get a little granular? Like I can tell you're very certain on your side, like you're certain. Like you are very certain on what you want. You're very certain in your business. And Tony Robbins said, when you have 1% more certainty than the other person, you can influence them in the direction that you like them to go. Right? So I, right. I can see magic there for you. Like that's certain. That's not blowing smoke. I can see it. Right. When you look at the granular part of your business, do you do a, like a weekly method of operation in terms of I, I drop ship these thousands Weekly, monthly, how does that work for you? Okay, I am sending out postcards every two weeks. Thousands of them. Okay. Okay, so that, that's done usually on the weekends because it's probably the only amount of time I have. The rest of the time I'm taking phone calls, I'm closing people, writing listing agreements, getting contracts signed and closing. Now I do have an advantage over these people who do homes, okay? With homes, you got to go out and show it. You got to go show a dozen homes. Then you got to go back and write an offer. Then you got to check. Then you got to do the inspections. Then you got to be there for the appraisal. You got to do the walkthrough. You got to close. You got to do the closing table, the closing uh, closing company to close the transaction. With me, at least, I'm writing the vacant lot. I don't leave my desk. That's the biggest advantage. You call. It's like being a stock exchange broker. Okay, they call, they want to make a lot. Okay, fine. I rate the contract, get the seller to sign it. Boom, it goes to the title company. I sit back and wait for the mail to get my check. Next, next, and next. It's a great transaction focused business, right? It's not emotional. No, it's strictly numbers. The more numbers I get, the more I close, the more money I make. But it's a, like I said, it's a niche that I found. And as long as you keep on banging it out, you're going to make money. Now, again, um, person to person, I may not be able to close you. Voice over the phone, you're done. It's over. And that's, how, that's the attitude you have to have because you only get one shot on the phone. Yeah, this is extraordinary. How long have you been doing this type of business? Um, 14 years. 14. What did you do before? I was um, assistant vice president of PNC Financial Bank in Philly and Pittsburgh. I ran international operations. And then right after that, I was assistant manager for Bally's Total Fitness in West Palm Beach. So I get the, I get the workout making decent money in sales right. at Bally's Total Fitness. Okay. That was easy. Okay. What do people want to do? They want to lose weight. Okay. They come to the gym. The check is on their forehead. All you have to do is 
take it off, sign them up for a two year membership, next person. Right. But it was a fun job. It was a fun job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um, they're, they're struggling today, I'm assuming. Huh? <laughs> they're yeah. struggling today, I'm assuming. They're out of business. Right, right. It's the whole world's changing. Uh-huh. When you look at, you know, what, like when you entered the space, Bill, what I'm trying to understand is that when you entered the space, what gave you the confidence to know that you were going to make it in this, in this world where it's like 90% fail? I was part of the 90% that failed. Okay. But, but I had to pay the mortgage. Okay. And that's when I found I got to do something that no other agent does. I'm not going to get the $2 million home. I am not going to get the $3 million commercial property. And you have to sit, and I don't have the time to go try and find people to list their homes. Okay. So in this market, I found something that nobody wants to do. And once the word got out that still will do what nobody else wants, it gave me the numbers, okay? And as agents know, once you get one listing, you have something to say. And you have something to say and you can put it on a postcard and tell people, I have this listing. Can you give me something that you may be interested in? Do you think this, your style of business, like, okay, not all of it, but the way you market, can an agent today enter the resale side and just farm an area to get those listings? Or is it too competitive? It's too competitive. It's too competitive. When I started, I did the old farming, the walking the neighborhood. I had my neighborhood and I farmed and I found that it was, it was, it was saddening to walk the same neighborhood and see sales signs from other agents. Okay. There's just too many. Okay. It is better like in 2005 and six when we had the crash. Okay. A lot of people are going to drop it, drop out. It made, it made it easier to get property. You weren't making any more money because nothing was selling, but at least you had the opportunity. Right. Okay. But now there's just too many agents. It's unfortunate that, you know, it only takes a week to get a license and you're going to have a lot of people going out and, it's a very tough business to get into right now. If you were to give someone advice today to enter your space, would you say that there's room in the in the land market in never mind Florida? Like, is this is this um, an opportunity in the rest of the United States? For Florida, if you're in Florida, yes. I'm not so sure about the the rest of the United States. Um, some of the um, the unimproved properties don't sell regardless. It may be tough business to get into. But um, in any real estate business, there's always something there that nobody wants to do because you need to make a lot, do a lot of numbers. And unless you know somebody, okay, and you're just getting into the business, find something that nobody wants to do. So for some areas, it's, it's like rentals. Nobody wants to do rentals, okay? There's not that much money in it. You can't close it. But if you do a lot of them, it gets your name out there, okay? The biggest thing is to get your name out there. And then my success was postcards, okay? So I had great success with postcards. What does it cost you for your postcards? We're going to be asking that. I'm just super curious because, you know, I'm in real estate. You know, we do a lot of online leads for our business. But I'm like, you know... No one's farming up here. Maybe we should start farming again. 55 cents a card. 55 cents. 55 cents a card. Okay. And um, my return was slow when I started out. But I'm telling you, I'm getting a great return. And um, I'm, like, I'm making money every, every, every month, every two weeks. Okay. The expense of sending those postcards out. Okay. I will, for every thousand cards, I'm going to get 10 calls. Wow. Out of those 10 calls, I'm going to close you. Okay? Sure, I may make only five, $500 to $1,000 on the close. Right. Okay? But that pays for my postcards. Right. If I can close 10, 10 times the amount that I'm paying on the postcard. You're in the money. Right? You're in the money. And um, like we, these, these postcards, are they sensationalists in terms of like guerrilla marketing? Um, or 
three by five black and white postcard. Three by one and a half percent return. And I'll tell you how to make two percent return. It's very easy. Take your postcard and do a lot of misspellings. A lot. <laughs> okay. I, I'm telling you, in 14 years, I've proven this. It's a, I believe it's, you. Okay. They will call you. Okay. Who is your editor? Who's typing these cards? There's so many printing. You know, oh, geez, I'm sorry. Well, let's talk. You know, and I will get more calls just from misspelling on the postcard. So that's a, that's one of the tricks I have. The other trick is I'll fade it so you can hardly read it or change the font so it's really small, okay? So they'll call me up and they'll say, what are you trying to say? I can't read your card. What are you doing? And I get more people calling just for that. I got to get them on the phone. Once I get them on the phone, you close them. And how many would you send out every two weeks? You were like blowing me away that people actually call you on postcards. Um, usually I'm about five, 6,000 a month. Same kind of area, demographic, focus. State, I mean, countrywide. Everybody owns land in Florida. Everybody owns land in Florida. Okay. So I have a big database. And right. people are constantly buying lots, so we have new clients. Okay? And I send out more postcards. I keep sending them and sending them and sending them. And eventually, they're going to want to sell or they're going to want to buy. And they're going to call me. Out of those thousands, like I said, 1% is going to call me. And I can make a ton of business over 1%, 1 to 2% traffic. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm at a loss here. Um, because, you know, like, I mean, we entered a space where there was no one, we had no circle of influence, we had no database, you know, three kids married, and we did everything online, it was all online leads. And yeah, you know what, extreme amount of hours, Phil, extreme amount of hours, right, you start off on the buy side, you get some listings, you go back and forth, and if it wasn't for the, um, the online space, I couldn't have entered a market. I understand. And then now you're, you know, when I hear you, I'm thinking, you know, what, where did the faith come? Did someone show you proof that would work or you just said, I'm going to take a risk for the next six months and do this? It was like, you know, like I said, nobody else was doing it. I had to give the shot because what I was doing with regular real estate, trying to sell homes, farming a neighborhood, it wasn't working. Okay. And it got to a point where I had to pay my mortgage. So right. I had to try something. And eventually, I got, oh, okay, well, people don't want to do vacant leads. People don't want to concentrate on, oh, my God, a sale of $5,000? What am I going to make off of that? Oh, give it to Phil. Okay, sure. Yeah, give me that one. Okay, and I'll get the other 300 more right. that nobody wants to take. Okay, and that's how I got my numbers. Outstanding. What advice would you give someone today if they were entered the same space? Um, like I said, find, find something to, to start out with, find something that um, nobody wants to do and um, do as much floor time as possible um, while you're trying to find the niche. Floor time is a great opportunity. People are calling. They need help. Will you close a lot of them? No. You just need that one. Right. That one close. You close one house, one lot, okay? You now have something to say. Whether you're using social media or the internet, you now have something to say. And when you have something to say, people are drawn to that, mm. okay? And then you will get more business off of that. It's reciprocal business. And you just keep banging it out. When I send my postcards out, I started out, I said, I listed this property. I sold this lot. Come to me. Right. Call me. And people do. 1% do. And so you do all this work on your own. No, no help? No help. No help. Yes, I have an advantage. That's okay. I do a lot of numbers, okay? But 
um, I do it from my office. Right. I do it from right here. Okay. When I'm done, when I'm done with this, I'll make up calls. Somebody want to buy something. Somebody want to sell something. I'm writing a contract. It's gone to the title company. It's over. Next. All right. So you're not going out and actually looking at the land. Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I mean, if a com- somebody calls me up and they say they're interested in a piece of a vacant lot on a certain address and they want to go see it, I was like, "Well, go right ahead." Right. It's a va- It's right there. Right. So they only have to see it, right? right? Yeah. I don't have to open a door. Right. You know? Okay. But this is the advantage. Okay. Um, now in this in, in, in this environment with COVID nineteen, okay, I do have houses every once in a while. Okay, but you know, if somebody's interested in the house, there's video touring. They can do a drive by. Okay, and in the meantime, you can stay in your office and get more business, <laughs> do more stuff. So you take that, use that for your advantage. Right. How do you see this market that we're in due to COVID? Like, how do you, how have you changed how you operate? Are you working harder in anticipation of a, of a slowdown? Real estate is a, it's a seven day a week. It's 24 seven. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the, there's no way to do this part time. Okay. When, but when the market is high, when there's a demand, you are going to be on your phone all the time. And there ain't nothing you can do to stop it. Okay. When the market turns, that phone dies. Okay. It's you've strictly lived. market driven. Traffic is going to be market driven. And you've lived the downturn? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. And I, I was, uh, it was a tough year. I remember it was the third week of August 2005. My phone rings constantly. I mean, I have my phone off. Okay. So it's not. My phone rings constantly. The third week, August 2005, my phone stopped. And it was over. It was, it was, it, it just stopped dead on its tracks. I went, I went from making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to in 2006, I think I made $20,000. I couldn't sell anything. But then, of course, nobody else could either. It crashed. But if the market is strong, your phone will be busy. So as a performer today, so let's talk about this. And this is probably a tough, con- not many people want to have this conversation. As a performer, how are you preparing for a change in the market? So I know it's coming. Just when is it going to come? How are you preparing for that? Do you create another stream of income outside of what you do? Or do you just bank your cash? Or how do you deal with that? Um, Luckily, well, maybe I don't know whether it's lucky or not. Um, I'm so busy that I just don't have any time to do that. Right. Okay. It's it's just constantly transactions, numbers, numbers, numbers. I don't have time. Like when it happened in August of 2005, okay, where the, the phones just stopped and business just stopped, that was my opportunity to regroup and try and figure out, okay, what what am I going to do now? Right. But the only thing I could do was rely on the income that I made when the business was high. And that's really all you can do. That's right. In this business. Um, so you're a banker. I mean, you understand the nuances of the game, right? You understand that there is going to be ebbs and flows in the business. So you have to prepare for it. Yeah, you have to prepare for it. Is it coming? Phil, like, is this, are we going to have a change in the market? And I think, if we do, that affects the entire world. The real estate market is the major driver of the world. Election day, it's over. It's over. I'm saying by November, this thing is going to start. To, it'll, it will start turning. Okay. We've been going up for the past six years. The cycle seven. Yeah. It's going to turn and it's going to stop. Prices are already too high as it is. So I think we're going to have a downturn November. We never had a correction in 2007, 8, 9. Okay, we, up in Canada. We, yeah, up in Canada. We did not, especially in Ontario, we did not experience a, 
the transaction cha- um, a decrease in, in, in average sales price. I mean, we skated through. Um, we had a little bit of a dip in 2017 when they changed the mortgage rules. But we're back up to all-time highs again. And, um, you know, as a performer and as someone who produces an interest in peak production, I am worried for, for people out there today because I don't think they're prepared for when the phone stops ringing. It's going to be tough. And then you combine that with COVID-19 and the flu and the presidential election coming up. Okay. It's going, be, it's going to get tough. It's going to get tough. You're going to have to prepare. If you have the time, prepare now. Yeah. Find, uh, find something to, uh, okay. to make money. Yeah, you know, we, we look at it. And I don't think I'm prepared for a major turn in the market. We skated through the last two months. Um, but I do believe that the market's going to get very, very tough. Um, if you were to give, um, would you do it again? Like, would you go into this space again? Would you be in the real estate business today if you were to start again today? I got into real estate when I was in my 40s. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was at the point in my life, I had, I had relocated up into this area. And I got to a point in my life where uh, I couldn't find anything else to do. Um, you're going to get people in your 20s who are coming out of college who the demand for those kind of people is out there. But as you start hitting into your forties, trying to get into a new job, um, who's going to pay my medical benefits? Who's going to take a chance on somebody that, that old when you can get a 20 year old to do it for half? Would I get into this business? If I was in my twenties, would I get into this business? No, I want a salary. I want my benefits. I don't want to work on commission. But you get to a point in your life where, the only things that's left for you to do is commission based. So I'm going to sell real estate. I'm going to sell a car. I'm going to sell a loan. And that was, um, that was tough. Yeah. It was tough to get, the, you know, tough not to be able to get a salary position. Because it is a different mindset to go out there and say, you know, I don't like to use this expression and it's just, but it's just an expression. I eat what I kill. I mean, if I don't produce today in some capacity, where someone says yes to me in some way, I don't eat. That's it. And that's, and that's, and that's the mentality. I think that, let me ask you a question. Why do 90% fail then? Like, why do they not, they know what to do. This isn't rocket science. Let's be honest with you. We're not, we're not putting a, a man in the moon. We're not, we're not building rocket ships. Why don't people act upon the knowledge that they have? Um, in this business, in real estate, it, it, this is absolutely true. It's not what you know, it's who. Okay. Okay. And that, that, that is real estate business. Okay. With the exception of little niches of things that nobody really wants to do. Okay. In okay? real estate, if you know the right people, you will get the business. And I'm talking about standard real estate, selling homes. Listing properties. It's word of mouth, knowing the right people. Right. And that's why, and that's where you're going to, not, that's why 95% of the business goes to 5% because they know the right people. Okay. All right. And they're willing to do the work. <laughs> yeah. All right. They're willing to communicate and talk to as many people as they possibly can on any given day about buying or selling a piece of property. Basically, it's a factory job, right? How many people did I communicate today about this? Right. Right. Okay, exactly. But you have to, and, and knowing the right people. Right. People who got the money, you have the resources, have the right credit, right, to be able to facilitate a transaction. Exactly, yeah. Right. You're making me want to move to Florida. Come on down. Come on down. The weather's great. All your COVID cases are starting to freak me out a bit, but. Isn't it unbelievable? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's, it's not even news. Are they going to shut you down again? They should. Yeah. They should. But I, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. The economy, they, they want the economy. They want the money. They're not going to shut everything down. But, um, you know, they should. It's very nerve-wracking. Yesterday, 5,000 people more got sick. Okay. And Brevard, we're a small county. Okay. But 120 people. This was, that's 10 times more than when, it start, when the panic started. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. I think it's, there will come a point where there's a moment of inflection and then everyone's going to get a little bit scared again. Yeah. Listen, Phil, I appreciate you. You motivate me. Like you're doing the number of transactions most teams never do. And you actually are lighting a fire under me right now to perform at a different level and to really look at my own core beliefs and saying, you know what, maybe I got to change my beliefs about what is possible. And I appreciate you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Don't leave. Okay. Stay right where you are. Thanks again. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you like what you've heard and you're interested in seeing if you are fit to work with Peak Results Academy, here's what I want you to do next. Head over to peakresultsacademy.com slash call. That's peakresultsacademy.com slash call and book an appointment to speak with our team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 45 minutes and get you crystal clear on three things. Number one, what do you really want out of life and your business? Number two, what is not working for you today? And number three, the exact strategy you should be using to create massive change in these areas. Remember, changing your life and creating massive results does not happen by itself. You need expert guidance to make it happen. We're helping clients all over the world create peak results in their health, in their businesses, and in their personal lives. To see if we can help you do the same, head over to peakresultsacademy.com call. We'll chat soon.